Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tenez the Human, and welcome to this special Games Guard edition of Medieval Two Kingdoms. But today we look at the Kalmar Union. The people of Norway have united with their Danish neighbours under one banner and ruler. Indeed, we have joined under one banner, beautiful, beautiful flag. And today we're not only just going to look at this faction because they're quite an unusual one as they go. We're going to look at how you can play as them from the very start of the game. They're not so much an emergent faction like I normally do my little guides on. They are actually a formable nation and basically get them by Denmark meeting a certain set of criteria. But what we want to do is make it so you can play as them at the start of the game. To do that, we'll have to have a little fiddle with the game files. Before we get into that though, I'll just show you what normally happens in order to make this faction appear. If you're playing as Denmark, then on turn 9 you'll get this message about the Nordic unification. In essence, you need five settlements to make it happen. Those will be Kalmar, Gothenburg, Uppsala, Visby and Abo, marked on the map here with those big yellow X's. Once you've done that, you're well on your way to getting the union together. Once you've satisfied the conditions of those settlements, you'll start to get this message here, the last Norwegian king. If we can take him out, then we can get ourselves the Kalmar Union. So we're going to send our assassin into the lad. And there he goes. There he goes. The Kalmar Union can be formed. And with that, our flag changes. and We become a new faction. So what do you actually gain from being the Kalmar Union? Apart from, obviously, a magnificent colour scheme. Well, you inherit the Norwegian holdings for one, so we've gained these two settlements. We've also gained their army. So this general, which used to be actually the factionaire, he's now decided, nope, you should be king, and he's happy to join the faction. So we have their cities, their armies, but we also get some new units for the unit roster. So if we head into Hasselholm here, you'll see these chaps, the Sami Axemen. Pretty darn good as offensive infantry. Attack of 15, charge bonus of 8. That's a really powerful charge. And defense of 14. Very good stamina, effective against armor. They're a nice addition to your roster for sure. Another unit we get, a very interesting one, is the Svenner over here. A bit like scouts, slightly just defense than your normal scouts, but double the attack. 8 attack, 5 charge bonus. And worth noting, 60 soldiers. I'm on the scale size, which means that's the same as the infantry. This is a huge pack of cavalry, like Cav, who have a good, good charge in them. So they'll charge in. They won't last very long in battle, but with the amount there are, they can do some fantastic work, and you'll be mopping up all, I mean all, of the fleeing, routing enemies with those chaps. I think they're a lovely, lovely unit. And the final one we gain are these ones here, the Gotland Footmen. These are interesting ones. They're um, not too dissimilar, actually, to our Sami Axemen in some ways. They're still effective against armour, good morale, powerful charge, similar kind of stats. These, though, are only available with the Swordsmith Guild, which make them available. But if I take you back to the Denmark campaign, just before we change into the Kalmar Union, you'll notice that this effect in the guild only takes place after the Kalmar event. Back playing as Denmark, and in the citadel of Hasselholm, you'll notice that the Gotland footmen are no longer in the roster. Inside the castle, we do have the Swordsmith Guild, but you notice this time it doesn't say they're an option. So that is a little extra boosted unit that you can only get to the Kalmar Union. And I would suggest with those three new units, it's a pretty good reason to become the Union. You can actually decline it if you want, and obviously if you just go and kill the Norwegians anyway, it won't happen. But it's certainly an interesting little event, and I think it's well worth doing. So what exactly was the Kalmar Union anyway? Well, essentially it was the unification of Denmark, Norway and Sweden. This included the Swedish holdings in Finland and the Norwegian holdings in, say, Greenland and the Faroe Islands. But essentially what it was is one king became the ruler of all of those different kingdoms. It was actually what we call a personal union. So when one ruler has got the titles of those different kingdoms. They all became under one particular ruler. Be like James VI of Scotland, who became James I of England in 1603 when he inherited the throne of England. So this is very much a similar kind of thing. Emeka Pomerania became the king of all of those titles and formed the Kalmar Union. Called that because that is the city where the ceremony took place. The union was set up in 1397, principally is a way of counteracting the Hanseatic League, but it was also the personal project of Queen Margaret I of Denmark. 
Now, she actually became regent of both Denmark and Norway, but without an heir, she appointed her great nephew, Eric of Pomerania, as her heir. And when he was coronated in Kalmar as the king of both Denmark and Norway, the Kalmar Union began. And it would last until about 1523, after a series of civil wars tore it apart. Once inside Medieval 2 Total War folder, you need to head into the mod subfolder, and that will take you to the Teutonic Campaign. So inside there, we take the normal kind of passage through data into World Maps Campaign and Imperial Campaign. Now, we normally will use the desk underscore strat file when we try and add one of these playable factions in. We're going to have a little look at campaign script first, though. So here you find the data for the various different events that happen in the game. You obviously have the Lithuanian conversion from paganism to Christianity, the Kalmar Union, the Hanseatic League, among others. If we search down for the Kalmar Union, you will find all sorts of information about the formation in case you're interested. So in turn 8, we'll get the info message about Denmark being able to form the Kalmar Union. It obviously tells you which different towns you need. You can fiddle around with these if indeed you want to have less of them or want to change around what they are and otherwise it will also give the information here about Denmark gaining itself a new banner and the fact that Norway's assets get turned over to Denmark. But how exactly do we make this new faction a reality? Well normally we will head into this file here. Now, typically what we might do is we might take the Kalmar Union and paste it up here by Novgorod and say, oh, great, now it is a playable faction. And we could swing down to them and go and get rid of the Des until resurrected. And from there, we just need to add a general and indeed a town to start them off with. Now, obviously, you may have noticed that I keep on saying usually here, and that's because whilst this usually would work, it isn't going to work in this case. Let's head in the game and I'll show you what I mean. So the Kalmar Union has now appeared up here as a playable faction, of course. But if we head into the game, we'll notice a few problems. As we begin our campaign then, you'll notice that it hasn't crashed. We have ourselves a city. All looks absolutely fine. But we do have a few issues here. We have the little unit cards have not loaded properly, in spite of the fact that these are all units that should be usable as the Kalmar Union. Likewise, we have given this gentleman a name that should have worked for this faction, but alas, that hasn't done anything either. The problems don't stop there, though. The problems continue as we start to choose more buildings. So if I just use the process CQ little cheats here, we'll start to get those buildings sorted out. And we should at this point, with, for example, some of our buildings here, like Town Guard, and Town Hall starts to, to get some units, but we still can't get anything at all. And that's kind of the problem here. Technically, the Kalmar Union isn't a faction. Technically, it's something that Denmark transforms into. So there are no units listed under the Kalmar Union. And indeed, the only way you can really get them is to make Denmark transform into them. So what we're going to do is we're going to head back into the game files and we're going to try and sort it out so that we can make this happen without these annoying little bugs here. To do this, I need a clean slate, which means I need to revert that Deska Strat file to the original file. So I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to paste in my backup copy. So now we're back to the file as it is normally when you install the game. What we need to do now, though, is head into the campaign script because actually it's as simple as changing just one or two little things. Back inside the campaign script then, we need to head straight to set up Kalmar Union Counters. Now, literally all it takes is to change the set event counter here from 0, false, to 1, accepted. And that is literally all you need to do. The rest of the information about the Kalmar Union down here, you can fiddle with it all you want, but you will get all sorts of bugs. When I've changed this round so we only need Kalmar and I've given that straight to Denmark in the Deska Strat file, I've still had to wait till turn 8, even if I change this. Honestly, the simplest thing is to change nothing except for this tiny, tiny thing at the top here. Change these two zeros to ones, save this up, and from here, that will work absolutely fine. Having reverted the Deska Strat file back to its original form then, you'll notice the Kalmar Union are no longer there. All we've changed is those two zeros to one in the campaign script file. We're going to load up a game as Denmark 
And once this loads up, what we should find is that we immediately become the Kalmar Union. The people of Norway there we go. Norway days. and Denmark have united. And indeed, what that means is we've got the usual Danish towns here at the start of the game. We also have the two Norwegian settlements too. You'll notice, though, that we don't actually have all the requirement cities for the Kalmar Union, such as Kalmar itself, Gothenburg. You might think that's a little bit odd, but of course, we've kind of bypassed that second set of requirements in the game files. We've just told it straight on, yep, Kalmar Union exists. So this time we are indeed the Kalmar Union, and that means we won't have a problem with recruiting because, as I said before, the Kalmar Union are Denmark, and that means that the game, as far as it's concerned, still treats me as Denmark. It's just changed our little flag over here in the corner. Now, a major problem of creating the Kalmar Union this way is that you obviously have taken the Norwegians straight out of the game. And as your early rivals, it does kind of mean a lot of the difficulty gets taken out. You then have a huge swathe of rebel lands you can go and take, and you have a huge economy, and you'll pretty much be ready to steamroll the game. Denmark were never really the hardest faction to play as on this game anyway, let alone if you take out the little nuisance of the Norwegians at the start. Now, I think if you're going to play this yourself, you might want to go back into Deska Stratfeld and have a little bit more of a fiddle round, pass some settlements around, maybe make the other rivals stronger as well. Indeed, what I've done is I've given myself Kalmar and I've given the Norwegians Gothenburg, which obviously comes straight over to me. I'll show you what I've done right now, in fact. This time as we load up our campaign, then you'll notice that the map doesn't look quite like this. As I alluded to, I've switched around a few of the cities to other factions to try and balance it out a little bit. We'll still get our Kalmar Union message at the start. The people of Norway have Indeed, the Kalmar Union has happened and we have Kalmar this time. Indeed we also have Gothenburg over here. Now I assigned Kalmar to the Danish faction so we start with that. We've also inherited Gothenburg from the Norwegians so I have set this town as Norway in the files. It's obviously gone straight over to us. Now I think this time the game will have a much better balance to it. The Imperials, the Imperials look quite demonic over here. They have all my Danish holdings as well as a little tiny corner of Norway up in the top there. So they're going to be a much harder harder foe to take on, especially if I want to get my heartlands back. I've left these as all pretty strong cities and castles as they normally are in the game, so it's going to be hard work to smash through them and try and take back my territory. Indeed, I've got a big, big fortress over here with some experienced rebels in that might get in my way. And in general, I've given a few of the other little islands and things over to other factions. So we now have the Teutons with the uh, little one Visby over here, as well as Abo, and I've given Revel and Narva over to Novgorod. I think this is going to make a much better balance for the game. Now, naturally, you can kind of set this up how you like. This is the way, though, that I kind of fancied it would work out best. And indeed, it's what I've done for my own Camera Union campaign, which at the time of release of this video would have started yesterday. I do indeed have myself a playthrough, and I'm looking to see how this goes. Um, in general, they play much like Denmark, but um, yeah, I just think this will be a much more interesting way of playing it than normal. Give you a quick example of how you can move cities from one faction to another. We'll have a quick look for Kalmar and add it to Denmark. So if we swing down a couple of times, we will get to the slave section where they have the settlement of Kalmar. Not a bad little place to start with, to be fair. Make sure you get your spacing back to how it should be. We'll swing on back to Denmark. Interesting to note, actually, as we swing up, that the Norwegian settlements here actually have faction created of Denmark. What this means is that you actually won't have any culture penalties when you inherit them, which is always nice to see. So we've got ourselves a our town of Kalmar added in, but of course we also need the troops to go with it. To get the troops, I'm going to have to search for the slaves, just tidying up the space as I go. So if you search for the slaves, then we will be able to have a little look at the units which currently fill that space. We can obviously take the coordinates and remove their army from the game. Normally to do this, I would just load up the game's rebels and see which units they are. Then you should be able to find them in this pack here. Now I know it happens to be this particular army here, two Man of Knights, Viking Raiders, two Crossbow Militia and these Peasants. So I'm going to copy them, in fact I'm going to cut them out because I don't want those guys to have them at all. Search for Kalmar, it's a much easier way than swinging up to Denmark. And now I can paste this in over here. So if I just 
paste it in anywhere in the middle of this section. I can go and do that now. Just make sure if you're taking it from the Rebels, you get rid of the sub faction here. You can keep the name Christopher. That's actually a proper Danish name. You can always check Jessica underscore names in the data file if you want to check on names. This is the correct coordinates. And as long as these units are units that can be used by Denmark, you're fine. I'm just gonna get rid of the mailed knights. Let's keep it nice and simple. Some Viking raiders and a couple crossbow militia. In fact, we'll change it over to archers because you can always change it around if you like. I tend to find the best way of doing it though is to pick units from the roster the game has already got for you. That way you know you're not going to have any problems with it. And there you are, it's as simple as that. If we loaded the game up now, we'd also have Kalmar too. But obviously if you want to do it quite like I've done, there'll be a lot of changing around these armies from faction to faction. Considering the Kalmar Union barely lasted 120 years or so, the idea that the very notion of a united Scandinavia is very much one that persists even to this very day. So perhaps when you roleplay this campaign it isn't so much a roleplay of history, you don't really want to get yourself stuck in a pile of civil wars and then end up losing the game. No, what you what you really want to do is play that what if. What if Scandinavia did hold the Kamar Union together? What if they became one of those great powers of history? Indeed, that would be the total war way to go and smash through all of the forces over here to the east. That would be magnificent, wouldn't it? Indeed, it would obviously change history a little bit. The Empire of Sweden was a very significant power in the coming centuries. Indeed, today, Denmark holds quite significant geopolitical power, with kind of holding the Faroe Islands as well as Greenland. Something very, very important geopolitical power is held, especially by blocking these straits into the Baltic Sea over here. But anyway, you know what, if they were a united Kamar Yoon, they'd had all of this land and sea to themselves anyway. That just about sums it up for today then, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on this little exploration of the Kalmar Union. I mean, this is really quite an interesting thing to be finding back in 2006 on Total War. It's the sort of thing you see on things like Europa Universalis 4 and, you know, Crusader Kings 2, where you form yourself a new nation. But it isn't something that you see on this early form of Total War very often. So it's quite a delight to go and explore how we can just make the Kamar Union a little bit more accessible earlier in the game, or just to play them in a slightly different way. Of course, as I said before, I do have myself a series as the Kalmar Union, so do join me for that. There'll be the second episode of that out tomorrow, on the day this is released anyway. But for now, I will leave you. There'll be a little bit of a guide below in the description to some of my other modding videos. Do have a little look at them. But for now, I will leave you. I'm Thomas, this is Tenodes to Human, and this has been a little games guide into playing as the Kalmar Union. Thank you and goodbye. By Jave, it is a marvellous, marvellous day. Spiffin, one would say. Anyone for pimps. He has seen the light. He's joined the anarchy. He is cruel and cunning. And you know what? He likes a little drink, and I think that's marvellous. La 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 la, chop your way through the peasants. One shot. No!